Hi all. So we are continuing with our subject uh, EC three zero three upper automatic theory. So we have been looking at module number five regarding transmission lines and particularly regarding Smith chart. So in the last class we have seen the construction of a Smith chart and we will continue with the construction of Smith chart. Then we will also see some of the properties of Smith chart. Okay. So just to recap, in the last class we have derived an expression in terms of tau r and tau i for the Smith chart by equating the real part of the RHS and LHS of this equation. So, we have used this equation to derive an expression in terms of tau r and tau i and r and we found that they are actually concentric circles. Now, we are going to look at this part which is the imaginary part of the derivation. So, let me write the imaginary part. So, I can write the imaginary part as x sorry x is equal to 2 tau i by 1 minus tau r whole square plus tau i square. Okay. So, let us uh, bring this up denominator to the numerator and let us cross multiply you get x multiplied by 1 minus tau r whole square plus tau i square is equal to 2 tau i. Let us expand this. So, this is x into 1 plus tau r square minus 2 tau r plus tau i square minus 2 tau i is equal to 0. I just brought RHS to the LHS. Let us take x inside. So, this is x plus x tau r square minus 2 x tau r plus x tau i square minus 2 tau i is equal to 0. Okay. Now, let us take uh, tau r let us group the terms of tau r. So, I can so basically you have terms this tau r square there is this this these two. So, I can write this as x tau r square minus 2 x tau r that is 1 plus x tau i square minus 2 tau i that is the terms of tau i plus the constant x this is equal to 0. Okay. Now, let us take x out from the first and second terms. So, you will have x into tau r square minus 2 tau r plus x into tau i square minus 2 by x tau i plus x equal to 0. Now, if you look at this equation to make this perfect square, you need to have a plus 1. Plus you should have tau r square minus 2 tau r plus 1. Then it will be perfect square. So, what we do is you add and subtract 1 in this term. Similarly, if you look at uh, this term to make this perfect square, so you need to have tau i square minus 2 tau i by x plus 1 by x square. 
ok. So, 2 tau y into 1 by x. So, basically the b term is 1 by x. So, what we do? We add and subtract 1 by x ok. So, our new equation becomes x multiplied by tau r square minus 2 tau r plus 1 minus 1 plus x multiplied by tau y square minus 2 by x tau y plus 1 by x square minus 1 by x square plus x equal to 0. Okay. Now, let us take 1 out from this term minus 1 out from this term and minus 1 by x square out from this term. So, you will get x into tau r square minus 2 tau r plus 1. When you take minus 1 out, you will get multiplied by x. So, it will be minus x plus x into tau i square minus 2 by x tau i plus 1 by x square. And when you take minus 1 by x square out, it will get multiplied by x. So, you will get minus 1 by x plus x is equal to 0. Okay. Now, you see there is minus x here and a plus x here. So, that will get cancelled. Okay. And this minus 1 by x, I can move to this side to the RHS. So, it will be plus 1 by x. So, I can write dash x into tau r square minus 2 tau r plus 1 plus x into tau i square minus 2 tau i by x plus 1 by x square is equal to 1 by x. Okay. Now, you see that x is common in both the terms at the left hand side. So, you can bring this x to the right hand side. So, you will get tau r square minus 2 tau r plus 1 plus tau i square minus 2 by x tau i plus 1 by x square is equal to 1 by x square. Okay. Now, if you look at this term, this is basically tau r minus 1 whole square and if you look at this term, this is basically tau i minus 1 by x whole square. Okay. So, I can write the complete equation as tau r minus 1 whole square plus tau i minus 1 by x whole square is equal to 1 by x square. So, this is your next equation of a family of circles. Because if you look at this equation, it is again x minus a whole square plus y minus b whole square is equal to capital R square, where a comma b is the center and you have you can see the center is 1 comma 1 by x and the radius r is equal to 1 by x. Okay. So, you got a new family of circles with center as 1 comma 1 by x and radius as 1 by x. And remember, the x comes from our impedance as r plus j x, where r is the resistance and x is the reactance. So, this x is the one which is coming here. Okay. So, this if you look at the circles here, it has only dependence with x. Okay. So, this is called as actually reactant circles. Now, the resistance is always greater than 0, but the reactance can be both positive 
and negative because you have capacitance and inductance okay so let let us try to draw this circuit fine so let us put some values uh, let me draw first the axis okay and uh, let me put the values so first is x the value of x the reactance next is the radius 1 by x and next is the center 1 comma 1 by x. so this is radius and this is center so when i put x equal to 0 the radius is infinity and the center is 1 comma infinity when so x can be both plus or minus 1 by 2 so the radiance radius is always positive which is 2 and the center can be 1 comma plus or minus 1 by 2 again i can have, have x equal to plus or minus 1 so radius is 1 so i'll have 1 comma plus or minus 1 as the center similarly i can have x equal to plus or minus 2 so the radius is 1 by 2 and the value of center is 1 comma plus or minus 1 by 2. Similarly, I can have an infinite value of reactants. So 1 by x is 0. So I will have 1 comma 0. Okay. Fine. So if you look at uh, the expressions or if you look at the value of x or the center, you see there is a 1 here which means the x coordinate is always 1. So, if you have the tau r tau i uh, field, you know that at 1 comma 0, there is always a point. So, center is always along this line because this line is at tau r equal to 1 comma 0 or tau r the value of x is along this line fine okay now let's start from the last so that it will be easy to see this one you see that at x equal to infinity the radius is 0 and center is 1 comma 0 okay so radius is 0 means basically it is a point and it is a point at 1 comma 0. So, there is a point here. Okay. Next, let us see at x equal to plus or minus 2, the radius is 1 by 2 and the center is 1 comma plus or minus 1 by 2. So, this is the point 1 in the x. Plus or minus 1 by 2 will be somewhere here. So, this is 1 by 2, this is minus 1 by 2. So, there is 2 points here. And it says that the radius is 1 by 2. So, you see that from the point 1 by 2, if you add 1 by 2, it will be 1. So, this circle, the point with this center, this circle will pass through the point 1. So, it will pass through 1. Okay. Similarly, at minus 1 by 2 also, it will pass through 1. Okay. Now, let us take the other point plus or minus 1. Okay. So, plus or minus 1 the center is at plus or minus 1. So, so when x is plus or minus 1, center is at plus or minus 1. So, some, so the plus 1 will be somewhere here and minus 1 will be somewhere here. So, this is the point which is plus or minus 1. Sorry, plus 1. This is the point minus 1 in the y axis. And if you draw a circle, again, it has a radius of 1, which means it will definitely pass through the point 1 comma 0. So, I can draw a circle something like this. Okay. 
So, this is not a perfect circle. Similarly, for minus 1 also, you have something like this. Now, if you look at the third circle, so we have looked at uh, this one circle. Now, let us look at plus or minus 1 by 2. When x is plus or minus 1 by 2, the radius is approximately 2 and the center is at 1 comma plus or minus 1 by 2. Sorry, there is one mistake. So, this should be actually sorry, this should be actually 2. This is plus or minus 2. Now, with plus or minus 2, the circle will again become bigger because you have the 2 somewhere up and uh, you have something like that. Okay. So, it will be a very big circle, something like this. Okay, similarly, towards the bottom also, it goes like this. Now, at the last, you will have x equal to 0, the radius is infinity and center is at 1 comma infinity. Okay? Fine. So, radius infinity means it is basically just like a straight line. So, you can draw a straight line along this. Fine. So, we have taken only a very small amount of values. If you draw with all the values, then you can see the something like this. So, these are all different different circles, I am drawing it less. Okay. And we also know that the reflection coefficient value cannot be more than 1. So, the modulus value of reflection coefficient is always less than or equal to 1. So, whatever value is outside 1, we do not want to consider. Okay? So, if I draw a circle with center here and radius 1, you see that, so I can draw it something like this. Okay? So, I do not want to look at any values outside this black circle because reflection coefficient cannot be greater than 1. So, I can remove, sorry, I can remove all the circles or all the values inside the circles which is outside this black circle. Okay. So, I only consider the portion inside this. So, I, this is the portion which I consider. I do not want anything from outside or I will just neglect whatever is outside this radius equal to 1 circle. Okay? So, this is mod tau equal to 1. Okay? Now, if you combine this and the previous circle, then you will get the Smith chart. So, let me show by drawing the other circles also. Okay. So, so I, I can write this all the values of circles outside mod tau equal to 1 circle is neglected. Ok. 
okay because this is in a tau r comma tau i plane whatever smith chart we are drawing and you don't want to consider any of the circle outside this tau r comma tau i plane okay fine so if i draw both the circles together okay so i can draw something like this So, this is the reactance or resistance circle. this is the reacting circle okay so the green is the resistance circle and red is the reactance circle okay and this point is actually the point in which in the tau r tau y axis it is 1 comma 0 but if you look at the value of r so this is the point where the value of r is equal to infinity and the value of x equal to infinity because we know that at this point both the values are like this and this is the point where the value of r equal to 0 and the value of x equal to 0 so when you say r equal to infinity and x equal to infinity basically you are saying r plus j x is equal to infinity which is actually an impedance and when you have an infinite impedance it means it is a open circuit okay similarly if you look at this this means r plus j x equal to 0 which means zero impedance and this is a short circuit. So, this point represents a short circuit in transmission line and this point represents an open circuit in transmission line. Okay? Because we saw that at both the ends you can give values for r and x and you see that they have different like one is having the maximum impedance another is having zero impedance so the maximum impedance is open circuit and the zero impedance is the short circuit okay so let us go to the smith chart okay so we are talking about this point which is called as a short circuit point and this point is sorry this point is open circuit point and this point is the short circuit point we will see why it is related to transmission lines ok fine now you, you see that this has many number of circles going from this 
so it is like this there is a circle like this there is a circle like this and there is something down 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 etc etc so these are actually the reactance circles okay fine now let's say you are given some impedance or so let me just remove this let's say you are given that the value of your zl is equal to let's say 50 plus j 50 ohm assume you can mark an impedance in this circle because you know that this circle is drawn in terms of reflection coefficient and reflection coefficient is directly related to the impedance and let's say the characteristic impedance of the of your transmission line is 50 ohm okay so first thing you want to do to mark an impedance is normalize your impedance which is given so currently it is given as load impedance so you can normalize the impedance as zl by z0 so that is equal to 50 plus j 50 ohm divided by 50 that is 1 plus j okay now you need to mark this in the smith chart so you know that this is r and the coefficient of j is x so r is equal to 1 and x equal to 1 so that is your impedance or normalized impedance so if you want to mark this you know that these circles these circles are r circles and these circles are x circles so if you find the intersection of r and x circle for the value 1 you will get the impedance point so let's trace that okay so let's trace by different color so you see these values are r values which i mark as orange so my r value is equal to 1 means i go to the value 1 so that is this value okay fine so i i know that this circle the circle that i am currently drawing in orange is r equal to 1 circle okay so this is r equal to 1 circle fine now let's trace x equal to 1 so let's give a different color x equal to 1 okay so you know that these circles are x x circles this one this one this one this one this one etc okay and the value which is written there is actually the x values so this is x this is x equal to 1.8 x equal to 1.6 etc etc okay so you just go through this values and see where x equal to 1 is which is here so that is where x equal to 1 so let's trace that x equal to 1 point which is like this sorry this is that x equal to 1 circle so this is my x equal to 1 circle okay now if you want to mark the impedance you see that 1 plus j is the point at which you have the impedance or the point at which r equal to 1 and x equal to 1 is the point at which you have the impedance and that point is the intersection of 
both of these which is this okay you can see that there is a one here and one on the other side so that is the point saddle bar okay so this is how you mark an impedance in a smith chart fine let's take one more example let's take um saddle is equal to or let me write in different color so you can understand let's take saddle is equal to 100 plus j 100 ohm and z0 is equal to 50 ohm okay so my saddle by z0 is equal to saddle bar is equal to 2 plus j 2 fine so we need to mark this in smith chart so what can we do let's trace first you need to see this is r and this is x so you need to find the circle with r equal to 2 so r equal to is you see if you go along this this line you see that r equal to 2 is here okay so this is r equal to 2 so if you complete this circle if you go along the locus of this circle you can see all the circles which is intersecting with this two circle okay so this is r equal to 2 circle now my value of x is 2 okay so you want to find the value or let me make it bit more different so i'll say this is minus okay let's say saddle is minus 100 minus j 100 so i can say this is 2 minus 2j okay fine now all the reactance value all the x values above this line all the x values above this line is positive so here x is positive okay and all the values below this line here x is negative okay so the upper hemisphere you have x positive and the lower hemisphere you have x negative fine okay now you see the value of x here is minus 2 which is negative so it will come in the lower hemisphere okay so we need to find where x equals minus 2 so you go along this outer circle and see where it is 2 so this is 2 which actually means x is equal to minus 2 because it is in lower half okay so let's draw this and you see that it is intersecting at this point and this is the value where your z l bar is equal to 2 minus 2 j okay so this is how you mark an impedance in a smith chart okay so the circle on the circle which is uh, concentric or the complete circles are called the react resistant circle and the half circles are called the reactant circle upper part of smith chart is positive for x and lower part of smith chart is negative for x if you want to mark any impedance in the smith chart you find out the circle or find out the point where the corresponding r and x values intersect 
that is the point in which the resistance is that value. So, always make sure you do normalization. If you do not do normalization, the answer will be wrong. So, this normalization is important. Okay. So, so this is only a starting of how to use a Smith chart. We will see in detail in the next class how VSWR circle is made, how at a different at any particular point L dash in a transmission line you can find the impedance and the related things. Okay. Okay. So please have a look at the today's lecture and let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.